Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we are going to be doing something very unique, uh, something I actually haven't seen being done anywhere else on the internet before. Um, this was asked by one of my students and I figured, hey, that may make a pretty cool YouTube video. So uh, that's basically what I'm doing here. So basically we are going to be automating your mobile phone. So basically, um, usually with UiPath, we automating anything on your PC. But what I'm going to show you in this video is how to automate any application on your mobile phone. All right, so in order to do this, we actually need to mirror the screen on your mobile phone on the desktop, and then we are able to um, automate uh, whatever is visible on your on the screen mirror projection on your PC. So in order to do this, we're going to need a software. So I have a Samsung. So there's a there's an app specifically for mirroring a Samsung screen onto your PC, which is called Samsung Flow. All right, and you can download that on the Microsoft App Store. So I'm going to search Microsoft App Store and I'm going to open up the first link, whatever. Okay, let me just say go to South Africa English because that's where I'm based, all right? And then I'm going to search for Samsung Flow. There it is. So this is the icon and it's free. So you wanna click on that and then you wanna click this get button, all right? And it will then install, all right? So it's, it's saying open Microsoft Store. I'll just say open. It'll open it up on your machine, all right? Uh, you may need to uh, sign in into your Microsoft account in order to install it. If you don't have an account, you're going to have to create one. Um, and this is the app. All right, I already have it installed, but then you can click launch and then it'll open up just like that. All right, so in order to use Samsung Flow, you're going to have to have Samsung Flow installed both on your PC and on your phone. So to do that, you can just go into the Play Store on your Samsung device and search Samsung flow and then download the samsung flow app once you have the samsung flow app installed you'll then be able to connect your phone to your pc so now that we have installed um, samsung flow i'm going to open it so i'm just going to search for samsung flow there it is and here it is so it says to use samsung flow verify your identity using the authentication method you've turned on make sure your phone has samsung flow turned on and is connected to the same network so I'm connected to Wi-Fi um, on my PC. So what I'm doing now, I'm just connecting to the same Wi-Fi network on my phone. Scan for devices, All right? So um, I'm gonna click start. Okay, so here it is. Um, there's my device. Do you wanna register a new device? Um, I guess I'll say yes. And how will we connect? Let's just say Wi-Fi. Confirm the pass key. All right, it'll pop up came up on my mobile screen. I'll say OK. OK. Setup complete. Done. In order to mirror your phone screen onto your laptop, you want to click this Smart View button. So I'm going to click Start Now on my phone. And it should then start the mirror. There it is. Um, so if I just come to my home screen, here is my mobile device that is now mirrored onto my PC. So I can open apps like say Instagram and there you have it. So now I'm busy using um, Instagram, which is on my phone on my PC. Let's build a bot which will come and like all the recent photos on my Instagram feed. All right, so I'm going to open up UiPath Studio. And I'm going to start a new process and call it mobile phone automation. I'll click open main workflow. So my guess is that this is a um, going to act like a remote desktop would, that this entire thing is one image. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm just going to test this out. Actually, I can just use it with a normal um, UI Explorer over here. So I'm going to click Indicate Element and I'm going to try hover on um, Instagram here. And you'll notice that I'm actually unable to click on any buttons um, within the um, phone mirror projection over here. So in order to um, enable us to click elements inside here, we are going to have to use computer vision. All right, so there's a suite of activities for that. So we can come to activities and search for computer vision. Here it is. Um, so these are all the computer vision activities. All right, so let me just see here. The computer vision is part of this UI automation activities package. So if this isn't installed, then you won't find the computer vision activities. Next step, in order to attach to this window, what we want to do is we want to use a computer vision screen scope. All right, I'm going to drag that in. So um, just note that this is like using, say, a Excel application scope where you put all the other activities within. So it's telling us here that um, when using computer vision with CV UiPath server, UiPath may store development information and screenshots for analysis, blah, blah, blah. So basically they're saying that they can use our data. And it says by default, the community or trial plan you use um, can have up to 30 megapixels per minute. Higher number of server calls may be provided by contacting your sales team. All right, so if you want to um, use more than 30 megapixels per minute, you're going to have to upgrade to the enterprise pl plan and pay for it. So I'll click OK, or I agree. And here it is. So you'll see that it requires an API key. So to get that, I'm going to open up Google and I'm going to go to cloud.uipath.com, right? And I'm then going to go to admin and it should be under licenses and other services. There it is, computer vision. So you can see here, there's an API key, right? I'm going to click copy API key and I'm going to come to your path and I'm going to paste the API key into this field over here. So I'll put the double quotes and paste in the API key and click OK. Great. So now next step is we want to indicate on screen. So I'm going to click indicate on screen and I'm then going to click shift F2 and open up Samsung Flow, our projection over here. And I will then select that entire mirrored projection. All right, detecting screen elements and labels. There you go. So now if you um, click on this menu and you come here to show informative screenshot, it'll show us which um, elements are recognized as buttons. So you can see um, those are all, all have a square around it. So those are being recognized as buttons, the text. So these are all clickable elements basically. So that is good. Um, so what we wanted to do is we wanted to be able to click on the heart button. So if I scroll down a bit, we want to click on this heart button. So manually, if I click it, it'll like the photo. Then we'd scroll down and I'd like the next photo. That was an ad, but it's fine. And etc. So I'm just going to come here and I'm going to um, indicate on screen again. All right. And then I'm going to use a um, computer vision click activity. Check is to check a checkbox, drop downs to select an item in a drop down. This is to check if an element exists. This is to um, get text or copy text um, into a variable. This is to highlight text. This is to hover over text. This is to refresh the image on your CV screen scope. So basically you need to use this refresh every time the screen changes because this is being recognized as an image. So every time you navigate to a different page or if you scroll down or whatever happens, you're going to need to refresh the CV, um, refresh the computer vision um, scope so that it's able to recognize the element on the page. Right, so I'm going to use a click activity and I'm going to drag in the click over here and I'm going to test it out. I'm going to click on this heart. So you'll see if I hover over, it's able to recognize these as buttons, which is great. So I'm going to click on this heart but you'll see here that with this little message box, it says, 
duplicate matches, try adding an anchor. Right, so basically what this means is I selected this heart and you can see it has a little target here, which, is mean, which means this is the one I selected, but then it's also circling this heart in yellow, which it's telling us that this is a duplicate of the original target we selected. So usually when this happens, you need to select an anchor of another element so that it knows which of the elements you are referencing. So now if I set this as a, an anchor, it'll be able to only recognize the heart which has the speech bubble on the right hand side. So then it'll know that it's not this one because this one doesn't have a speech bubble on the right hand side. So I'm going to select this and there you go. It's now done. So we have our target, which is the heart, and we have our anchor, which is the speech bubble or the comments button. All right, so there we have it. So now that is the click. So let's test this out and I'm going to run this and I'm going to see if it's going to click heart on that photo. So I'm going to click run. There you go. So it's attached. Now we just need to wait for it to click. There you go. It liked the photograph. All right. So let's say what we want to do now is we want to scroll down and click heart on the next photo. So what you can do is you can use the hot key on your keyboard, which is page down. It's usually top right hand corner of your um, number pad on your keyboard. If you click page down, it um, should then scroll down to the next photo. And you can see now the heart is available for the next photo. So let's try and add in that page down. So I'm going to come here to activities. And I'm going to use a send hot key. I'm going to drag in that and I'm going to select page down. That is the um, hotkey we are looking for. All right, so I'm going to test this out. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to need to re-indicate on screen because now the image has changed from before. All right, so detecting. Great, I'm going to click run. And now let's see if the page down works. So it's attached to the, the screen, clicks heart, but you'll see that it didn't page down. All right, so sometimes this happens when you're using a remote desktop and for some reason it fixes that when you have when you just copy paste. Um, so, you, so you trigger the same activity or the same hotkey activity twice. So that usually fixes the issue and let's see if it fixes it now. All right, I think now it's actually going to unlike the photo because it's already liked it. But let's see what happens. Oh, I see. Okay, so now it's struggling to find the heart because the computer vision before um, had a different image, meaning that this wasn't red before and now it's red. So now it's actually detecting this as a different image and then that's why this is breaking and not working. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click stop here and I'm going to unlike this, right? And let's try run this again and see if it will now click like properly. There you go. All right, so and look at that, it paged down. So that is great. So then we know now that the page down is working. So basically what we can do now is we can actually put this click and um, these page down activities into a loop. So I'm going to use a while loop. I'll drag the while loop in and I'll copy these activities into the body of the loop, just like that. Uh, then I'll create a condition, control K, and then I'll say um, uh, photos or quantity um, likes. So basically the amount of likes. So let's set the condition while the quantity likes is less than um, or equal to, let's say, oh, where is it? Less than or equal to. And I'll just put 10 for now. So we're basically saying the first 10 images. 
I'm also going to set the quantity likes variable in our variables panel to one. And I'm going to make sure the variable type is an integer. I'll also set the scope to the sequence. And the sequence in this case is the main sequence. So I'll just rename this to main. Cool. So we're also going to have to uh, increment the quantity likes variable. So I'll do that at the bottom of this body, which is within the while loop. So I'm going to drag in an assign activity. I'll drag a sign, put it there, and I'll say quantity likes is equal to quantity likes plus one. So this is going to add one to quantity likes um, until 10 is reached, and then it'll stop liking the photos. All right, so um, one last thing we need to do before we try and run this is we need to refresh the scope because we saw from before whenever this image changes um, or whatever's displayed is changes the computer vision doesn't work so basically every time we click page down it's actually changing um, the image so we're going to have to refresh the scope every single time so i'm going to drag in a refresh type in cv Um, so we want to use the CV refresh and I'll put that in the loop right at the bottom, right there. So what it's going to do here is it's going to refresh the image. I'm going to come here and set continue on error to true for all of these activities. So if an error does happen, it doesn't just break the bot and exit the loop. Um, then I'll set the timeout over here to, let's say... 2000 milliseconds which is two seconds and i'll do that for the send hotkey as well so what the timeout will do is instead of it waiting 30 seconds before it runs into an error it'll only wait two seconds before it runs into an error so let's say for instance if it's not able to identify the heart on the screen um, it would usually run into an error and then the the bot will stop and then it won't even continue for the remaining likes um, whereas if we have this continue on error set to true and a timeout of two seconds, it'll then um, wait for two seconds. If it hasn't found the heart, it'll then continue in the loop. So it's just a, a way to handle errors on your activities. It's quite useful. Great. So that should be it. Um, so I'm going to click run here and let's see if this is now working. So it should click like on this photo. There you go. So now it clicked page down. Now it's going to click heart on the next photo. Then it's going to click page down. And then it's going to click heart on the next photo. There you go. And it's going to keep going um, for 10 different photos. So it's going to click like on the first 10 photos because that's how we set it. And there you have it. It has now liked um, the first 10 photos. And this is our output panel. But that is basically it. That is how you would do mobile phone automation. It's the same way you would do remote desktop automation. So let's say you have an RDP session, remote desktop, um, and you connect to another PC. If you want to use your path and automate that remote desktop console without having your path installed on that machine, you would use these computer vision activities because it detects the entire screen as a single image. All right, so that is basically it. I hope this was um, helpful and that you learned something new. Um, if you do want to do Instagram automation, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. Um, I would rather recommend you use the web version of Instagram since it is available. Uh, but if you have any apps which are only available on mobile and you'd like to automate them, then this would be a good approach um, or a good way to do it. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel and um, leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll answer you down there. Thanks for watching. Cheers.